And now he's playing wiffle ball with me in the backyard. So I'm planning to bring like literally like a bucket of balls on the beach. And my wife thinks I'm completely insane. And I'm like, you know, listen, if you want, you can take care of Crosby. She's like, no, no, you take care of Crosby and have some. Exactly. Relax. It'll be fine. All right. Good luck, Nathan. Oh, are you kidding me? I'm so excited. He actually said something really adorable over breakfast. I was a little bit concerned he didn't want to play anymore. So I said, oh, you don't want to play this morning? He said, sure. Then he says a minute later, he goes, Daddy, why do you always want to play baseball? And I'm like, oh, man, I'm being that obvious. <laughs> All right. Now we're, uh, we're closing in 130 people combined. A lot, a lot of folks watching. We pre appreciate your support. Hey, listen, one, one person at a time, you know? If we just get a few extra today, a few extra next week, by the time Crosby's in college, we'll get there. Yeah. Steve Payne should have John's tattoo. Yeah, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good tattoo. Scott Stevens, oh yeah. Former Devil, Brian Suter. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Jeff was saying he uh, used to work at a card shop when he was younger, and he's excited to go through his childhood collection. He's having fun with us here, and he's getting back into it because of us. That's great. There we go. We got a mid-career Ray Bork. Very nice card. Looks to be almost dead nuts there. I'm gonna check the pot for you on that. Uh, if someone wants to look up a card number forty from the 1986 Topps hockey set, that would be great. Interesting. Hey, Sam, I could bother you for one second. Um, I don't know much about uh, this. Some gentleman is asking about this arrow here. I don't really know anything about that. See what we're talking about? Uh, it, it looks like um, a mouse. Uh, it might be loose mouse. Oh, okay. Oh, it is. Great. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, we got to take a look at this. Speak of the suitors. Here's another one. Ron, Ron Suter. <laughs> Well, we got two A-Rods in a pack, and we got the Jordan Rookie and the Jordan Sticker. So I say if we hit three, we're doing pretty well. Glenn Resch. certainly remember him. Yeah, it might be tough. Let me know on that Borky when you have a chance, please. Right after this, we're going to show off the uh, other collection we bought in the last few days. Totally ungraded. Oh, I saw a pang when I got excited. It could have been Lemieux. While we have a minute here, and we're finishing up um, Nathan's 1985 Topps Hockey Pack. I want to give a little shout-out to our good buddy Rich Miller from Sports Collectors Daily. It's where I go every day for my hobby news. And, in fact, last night was kind enough to let us broadcast on there when we opened our 1967 Top Cello Pack, uh, third series. So we did a dual broadcast, Lou, on both our YouTube and Facebook pages, as well as his Facebook platform. And I think, yeah, I think there might have been about 100 people watching on there, so it was fun. <laughs> I wanted to see if you caught that. <laughs> No, that's why, I, if you noticed, I didn't even comment about his name. I went right by. Uh, 26 nines, 8 tens. Okay, so the Borky only has 8 tens. So, Nathan, we're going to grade that for you on the house, bud. Steve Larmer was a very good player. Let me tag that for you, Nathan. Thanks, Rick. All right, so 
Uh, Robert, if I could bother you for those two uh, groups of cards over there, please. It'd be great. And the other group. So I believe these folks were from Connecticut. Total, you know, leftover childhood family collection. These were the uh, big stars that we had a value. So as you can see, not only a lot of cards, but the condition ranges, meaning to, you know, somewhat beat up. So, you know, if you're looking at some of the cards from the 50s here, 59, like, these are pretty sharp. Well, not that one in particular, but um, we're just going to run through some of the stars. As you can see, we have not even put these in holders yet. All right. So not all of the cards are going to be, you know, gem mint, but they don't have to be gem mint for us to appreciate them and for them to have value. So there we go. Low grade Kamene, uh rookie. Certainly well loved. But nonetheless, still a Kamente rookie. Yes, I like that much better. Here we go. Sandy Koufax rookie. Don Zimmer. Two Don Zimmer rookies. Let's see what else we got here. The stuff like this. You know, very well rounded. So obviously low grade, maybe a one and a half, two. But still 56 Aaron. Uh, most certainly. And to be fair, let's, there's an affordability to it, Lou. So, um, you know, they didn't make an infinite amount of baseball cards. And as much as high grade commands a premium, I believe there's so much activity on vintage cards right now that even some of the lower grade stuff is picking up a little bit. Because, you know, maybe, and I'm making it up, maybe there's 100 people or 1,000 people that want to own a 57 Clemente or a Clemente card for $20. So because of that, Lou, and there's not 1,000 available, maybe you have to pay $40. I'm making it up, of course. Um, but that's what I've seen is going on. It's very interesting in the low-end market. Like, it's very easy to move these cards. Chock full of stars, as you can see. Charles G., I don't know if you're watching, bud, but we're going to be screening this for some cubbies for you. Two, job, uh, two people, myself and Scott Alpaw, our vice president. And for me, I don't consider this work. I enjoy this. I just don't have as much time as I'd like. So I don't know that I'll be going through this collection. But I'd like to. Steve and I agree with you. 57 Aaron is one of my favorites. The reverse negative. Um, all right. So let's see what we have uh, next on the docket. We're going to open up, let's do a little baseball. We're going to try to find our own, should do 81 Opeachy. We're going to do 81 Opeachy, not an easy pack. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, Eric, we like what we do here. Appreciate the, uh, you know, that you're watching and hanging out with us. All right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That'd be crazy if we can get him live for an interview. Uh, so, Jim, can we get a few words from your wife? What the hell is going on? Why are you doing this? Yeah. Honey, I just won a $10 break credit to VinceBreaks.com. And he gets smashed in the head with her phone. <laughs> I just like to have a good time on the show, you know? Uh, okay. Hey, Heather, how are you? Heather is a fairly regular watcher of our show. Appreciate that. Jim, you got that right, bud. Absolutely. Um, and that is a wonderful thing about buying stuff, uh, you know, through Just Collect. Um, now that we have vintage breaks, um, you know, Jim brings up a good point, Lou. You know, some of the cards that I'm making it up, right? They're lower grade. They're worth something, but not as much. Um, as I think they should be worth. Yeah, we might we might use them for giveaways for vintage breaks because I know the folks really appreciate them. Uh, all right, so let's get the list. <laughs> all right. Here we go. 1981 Opichi Pack, number 31. Steven, you have one spot. Derek, you have the rest. Randomize the list. 